welcome back to Song of the Stitch. My name is Lizzie and today I have filmed a little tour of my sewing space for you all. So I really hope you enjoy it and without further ado, let's get started. This way to a craft zone or rather at the moment this way to the man zone. So this is mine and Chris's joint study as well as being our guest room. So if I give you a three, a full, sorry, a full, blah, 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 a full <laughs> 360 view of the room. So start here and then pan around to my nice little sewing zone and then this is the guest bedroom bit um so yeah it's nice actually we have a little sort of little companionable zone going on so chris will be playing his video games and things here and i'll be doing my sewing and it ends up being this a room that we actually spend a lot of time in together just hanging out it's our it's our hobby room i guess really um <clears throat> and so if we start over here in the bay window this is my dress form. Her name is Gladys, because don't all dress forms have old lady names? Post your dress form's uh, old lady name in the comment box below. Let's see who's who's gone really retro with their naming. So Gladys is, I think the brand is Lady Form. The ones that you can adjust the size of anyway. So you uh, twiddle the knob. It's nestled here between her boobs to adjust the size across the chest. And you can also change the waist size and the hip size, which is really useful. Most of the time she's set to my measurements. Um, in fact, all the time she's set to my measurements. Although she looks a lot slimmer than I feel at the moment. So, oh, screw you, Gladys. Um, but because this is a guest room and Gladys is a headless human form, whenever we have guests, we tend to move her downstairs so that she doesn't scare the crap out of people in the middle of the night, which has happened on one occasion. <laughs> Just here, ooh, a bin, how lovely. It's full of fabric scraps from my last project and a ceramic pot. Don't know what that's doing in there. I'll sort that out later. Anyway, we've got a little chest here which just contains all my dull, admin-y, non-sewing things. Needed to have space for that paperwork somewhere, so it all lives in here. And I think this chest was brown originally. I bought it in B&Q and just to make it a bit nicer, I gave it a few coats of a kind of chalky finish furniture paint. And then this, not stored very well unfortunately I don't have a good place to keep this at the moment is sewable Swedish tracing paper which I love at the moment actually I, I wasn't sure about it but I found it absolutely great for transferring my paper patterns onto so I use um, tracing wheels a lot when I'm transferring my patterns onto fabric and the little teeth if you see that there we go the little teeth on tracing wheels cut through the paper so your paper patterns end up not lasting very long um, and this is just much more durable with the added bonus that once you've drawn a brand new pattern onto these I can then um, pin it onto Gladys over here and work out whether it's going to fit I can test lengths all this kind of stuff so it's also on the top here the little pot with all my sewing tools in just so that they're ready to hand so things like more tracing wheels Cutting scissors, uh, seam gauge, ah, an orange stick for pushing out those fiddly corners. And then here I've got a little candle which I like to have burning while I'm sewing. It smells like cloves and cinnamon and all those lovely things. A radio so that I can listen to Planet Rock while I sew because I, yes, I am that cool and I listen to dad rock stations. Oh yeah. And then a vase full of knitting needles, which are an assortment of ones that I've bought and ones that I inherited from my grandparents. So things like this amazing green Bakelite set. I actually love working with Bakelite needles. They're really smooth and just lovely to knit with. But the problem is they're very brittle and we have hard floors <laughs> on the ground downstairs. So the number of times I've dropped Bakelite needles and they've shattered everywhere. It's not good. They're so brittle, but they're very, very pretty. I've got a nice bright orange one here whose partner sadly perished on our living room floor, which is a terrible shame. And so <clears throat> the desk itself was, I think, a sort of 90 quid job from Ikea. And it's great for this space. It fits it really nicely. And it's got some great storage in there as well with the shelves. My only complaint about it is it's actually quite low. So when you're standing up and cutting fabric and things like that, um, you actually end up with quite a sore lower back sometimes. So I do quite a lot of cutting out on the floor. Ooh, there's my floor. <laughs> we start at the top up here. So Chris basically stole all the natural light in this room. He had his desk before I did. So he bagged this window over here with lots of nice natural light streaming in. 
and this corner can get really dark especially in the winter so I've just got a nice big angle poise lamp that I can shine over the space to illuminate everything if I need to and I've got another lamp in the corner here to add extra side on illumination should I need it and then also up here so my finger getting in on the action there um we've got this gorgeous piece of machinery which is my granny's uh, singer 66k sewing machine I've actually written a blog post about this I think she bought it in 1933 it's a beautiful piece of machinery and I decided I really wanted to have it out on display. She kept things like all the old instruction manuals are still here. And so on the shelves below, this is my sewing library basically. So on one side, these are more, ooh, where's my finger? There we go. These are more kind of how-to pattern technique books. And these are more of my kind of fashion reference books. Um, and also a few little decorations like this Yak Yashica Minister 3 camera, which does actually work. I found it when I was cleaning out my office in our old laboratory and nobody knew who it belonged to or where it came from. So I said, all right, I'll give it a home. And um, we I think Chris and I took it to Amsterdam and it produces these very weird kind of ghostly pictures because I think its mechanism is a bit old and unhappy. But it's a really beautiful camera and it's quite fun to use. And then I've got... Um, sea urchin that I found on the beach in Mexico in a glass jar because just as you do. Over on the desk itself I've got, well that's my camera, let me just get that out of the way. I've got my sewing machine underneath this little quilted cover which I made for it. There are quite a few tutorials on the internet and how to's for that kind of thing. So this is my sewing machine which is a, is it a Janome Decor XL 5024. So this is the first and only sewing machine I've ever had. Um, working really well. It's got a nice selection of stitches. It's not one of these computerised ones, but it works really well for me. Uh, just pop the little cover back on there. Under a far less nice cover, this plasticky thing, that's my overlocker in there, which is one of the, the brother ones. It's got a nice colour-coded th colour threading mechanism, which is really very helpful. And then over here, is my easy reach tool section. <laughs> so I've got things like rulers, pins, a box full of a lot of assorted tools in there, things like fabric shears and carbon paper stored underneath, more pins, just every little additional tool that isn't in here um, is in here. So moving over here, some fabric bits left over from my last project which will be appearing on my blog shortly so I won't talk too much about that. Some headphones, again very useful for video editing. My laptop, this guy which is a new addition for me. I haven't had a big monitor screen like this for a long time, possibly ever actually. And I'm still not sure whether I like it being on the desk. Like I have a lot of machinery <laughs> on this desk as it is and it does take up valuable fabric cutting space but it's also really useful when I'm working on my blog so I can have for example my blog open on the screen and the photos I'm editing on the laptop below um, and just kind of switch between the two while I'm working so it makes my workflow a lot more streamlined for that so I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying using it at the moment but I'm not sure whether I'm going to hang on to it forever and I've got a little lamp here hello that's me and then uh, coasters <laughs> because there's the bed. So this often ends up doubling up as a bedside table and when people have morning tea just, you know, to try and avoid the tea stains. It doesn't always work, but sometimes. Then I've also got this fabric which is for my next project. It's newly washed, it needs pressing. It's a kind of... it's linen and it's this lovely... it's woven... it's shot, so it's woven in one direction with this kind of gold coloured thread that you can just see on the end here and then in the other direction with this amazing purple colour and what you get is this sort of semi-metallic lilac which is not showing up very well in this light but it changes colour amazingly under different lights so I'm looking forward to working with that I think I'm going to make quite a simple dress with it but that's, that's the next project and then if we move under the desk there's a horrible tangle of wires under here which we won't look at for very long but they're just all my various pedals and stuff and we've got knitting storage in the corner over here. So this is my current projects basket, various bits and bobs in there, and then yarn storage in there, kind of overflow yarn storage. And then various 
pots of buttons and notions and some sellotape and parcel tape apparently. Um, but then here is something that I've been working on quite recently. My paper pattern storage. Now previously they were all wedged into a great big box file which was just not nice at all. I couldn't find anything and I kept damaging patterns as I pulled others out and all this kind of stuff. So I bought these plastic um, file boxes from Muji and the little file dividers came from there as well. And basically I've got three dresses, bottoms, tops. And if we have a quick look inside the tops one, if I pull out this one, this is the Capital Chic White Russian. This is the one I've been using most recently. I open this up. So this I've actually transferred onto the Sobel Swedish tracing paper, um, as you can see there. But then here is the paper pattern for this. And as you can see, this is what that's what a tracing wheel does to a paper pattern. It's cut straight through it. And so this is falling apart a little bit. So I'm hoping that this will last longer than the paper. So I won't have to print out another one anytime soon. I'll just pop that back in there. So finally over here, got the last little bit of storage. So I've got cutting mat. It's really useful for stretch fabrics. And then this little guy, or rather quite a big guy over here, um, which is a cantilevered sewing box. So it opens up Comsa. And I pretty much use it for storing absolutely everything else that I don't use as frequently. Um, I bought it, I think it was in an antiques market, for about £25. And it was covered in this horrible spray varnish kind of thing. And so me and my dad spent ages sanding it back down and I gave it a good wax. And then I've lined each of the compartments inside with a different fabric. So just to give it a, a slightly different look. So I really like that. And so each section tried to kind of keep it as organized as possible so I've got things like my smaller overlocker bobbins on that side certain threads there more thread in the top section over here so all rules see falling out all my various different threads going on in there down here um, ooh, fabric glue yay and pliers and beads mostly beads I think going on down here things like that and then in the bottom section, all sorts of random things. These are fastenings of all descriptions. So I've got poppers and hooks and eyes and a lot that came from my grand sewing kit, actually. Um, if only I had smell-o-vision, uh, an enormous scent of mothballs would just have hit you in the face. Um, the smell of my grand sewing kit. And a bag of lavender. Mmm, smell it. And some giant sequins. Gosh, there's some cool stuff in here. And then over this side, those are like knitting bits and bobs, so um, point guards to stop your stitches falling off the end of French knitting dolly. God, I keep weird stuff. Um, stitch markers, double point needles. Oh, this is rather cute. Um, it is a needle size gauge in the shape of a bell. And I actually have several of these, um, again, from my grand's kit and because they've got the little loop in the top I turned a couple of them into Christmas decorations so we have sewing needle or knitting needle rather gauges hanging on our Christmas tree just because so that is it for a tour of my sewing space I really hope you enjoyed it maybe got some ideas for your own or a creative space in your home something like that if you have enjoyed it I'll be really grateful if you could maybe give me a like or a comment possibly even a subscribe that would be super awesome so I hope the rest of your day is amazing and I will see you in the next